Hey, hey world, it's Michael Gascon, the horse guru, and I am doing another virtual clinic. Today we are gonna be working with Nico. Nico is a seven-year-old imported Frisian from the Netherlands, and we are gonna be working with how to work with a disrespectful Frisian or big, strong dressage horse, anything that likes to get up here and just, just be tough, doesn't listen. He was imported as a dressage horse, but then he hurt his owner uh, and pulled her arm out of socket and then run her over. Uh, so just disrespectful, rude, same way under saddle, no steering wheel, and we're just gonna do our very best to, to humble him up, get him a little softer and easier, basically put more obedience on him. Whenever he spooked, he would take off. Whenever he would take off, he had no steering wheel. Um, you couldn't really steer him because anything that you would do with him, his head would just pop up like here and get stuck. So though it looked pretty, you had no control because you couldn't control his steering wheel. Our mantra at Gascon Horsemanship is control the head, control the horse. So if I can get that joker, left and right is where we're gonna start. If you control left and right, you control where the horse goes. The horse cannot run with you, buck with you, or rear with you if you can get the horse left and right. Everything that doesn't behoove your health and well-being happens in a straight line. Bucking, running, rearing, it all has to do with something with them locking you out of the steering wheel, their head being the steering wheel, and them driving with their back end. So if I can get him soft and easy enough to give up his back end, something that he's never learned to do, soft and easily, where no matter how spooked he gets, how worried he gets, I can simply grab one rein and move his butt. I'm gonna get this horse where he can be a trail horse like his owner wants him to be. He can be an easy, forgiving horse uh, like he wants to be. And he has a little meanness about him. When he came, uh, when he came a couple weeks ago, he was a little strikey, a little bitey. He would kick you if he got the chance. As he's getting less and less opportunities to do those things and it's not helping him, we're still doing whatever we want to do with him, that's starting to dissipate, so he's becoming more personable. But it comes from controlling the head. Control the head, control the horse. Uh, I just got on him. I cinched him up, swung the leg over. The first thing that I want to do is sit still. Horses are creatures of habit. If you get on and go, get on and go. Before long, they'll go before you get on. The next thing I want to do is check button number one, which is his head. I'm going to slide my hand down until I find his face and I'm going to pull to the seam of my jean in my pocket. I see a lot of folks flexing in front of their body here. I never want you flexing in front of your body unless you're trying to move the shoulder. And I don't want you flexing behind your hip unless you're trying to move the butt. So now we have three buttons. Button number one, pulling to our, our hip, that means give me your head. Pulling towards his butt, towards his hip bone, that means give me your butt. And if we pull him in front of us towards our shoulder, that means we want his shoulder. So we're going to start with this head. Slide my hand down the rein, find his face, pull here. Slide my hand down his face, pull here. Just his ability to do this shows you the three weeks of work that we had, the few weeks of work that we had with him because he couldn't even do that. I have a D-ring snaffle on him. I'm just gonna find his face and I simply wanna be able to flex him from side to side without there being an issue. You see how he's moving his feet? I don't really want that, so I'm just gonna flex side to side until he stops moving his feet. There we go. Nice. So that's exercise number one. The next thing that I'm gonna do is move his butt, and I'm gonna do that by finding his face, pulling his face towards his butt. So you notice he has a real hard time with that. So I need to fix that. Notice I'm not using my leg. A lot of people say, well, Michael, you're not using your leg. In the history of human horses interaction, nobody has ever physically kicked the horse and moved them where they wanted. If you kick the horse and your horse did what you wanted them to do, they wanted to. If you don't believe me, I have a group of unstarted colts right out there, big group out in the field. Feel free to walk up to any of them you want to and kick them and see if they go where you want them to go. I would bet no. So what I'd rather do is slide my hand down the rein extend my inside foot so I can push against the stirrup and pull back because he's real stiff. And then I want to twist my body and look at his hip. Twist my body and look at his hip. This is the work that a lot of, a lot of dressage horses and gated horses and English horses are missing to be forgiving trail horses. They're so built up in the bridle in a straight line that they don't give to the side. And without the ability to take his butt away, when he gets uncomfortable, 
we have no ability to take his motor away from him. So I'm just walking around here. It should never be harder to turn your horse than it is to turn your truck, to turn your car. This horse weighs 1,500 pounds, 1,700 pounds. If I can't turn him and move his butt at a walk, when he gets scared and gets to going fast and gets to bucking, what am I gonna do with him then? So I'm just looking for him to be softer. Every time that he moves his butt, I'm releasing those reins and I'm just picking apart his resistance. Look at him starting to drop his head. That's not with me asking him to drop his head. That's just me taking away his resistance. When he starts to try to lay on me, I pulsate so that he has nothing to lay on, which means I go bump, 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 bump. Every time his, he gives me a big step over with his back end, watch his back inside foot step under and pass his back foot on the outside. Right there, nice. I'm gonna trot him off here and ask for the same thing. Excuse me. Thank you, sir. Excuse me. Thank you, sir. Now this horse was trained, I'm assuming. What he's told me is he was trained in a vacuum. What does that mean? That means he was trained in a good environment, you know, in, in a enclosed arena with no stimulus and no stimulation. So whenever we started riding him out and about, when he started seeing things in traffic and trucks and cats and dogs and steers and and all the stuff that we have in Redneckville, he would lose his steering wheel. All that dressage training would go out the window because he would stiffen up on you. He would stiffen up on you and take the steering wheel from you, just take you for a ride. Just flat out, you weren't stopping him. So it's our job to make him so, so soft and easy that when his owner, his owner is an experienced gal and she probably weighs 110 pounds, so there's not a lot of muscle there, nor should there have to be. So we want him so soft that it doesn't take a grown man pulling on his face to give his butt and give up that motor. But anybody, a little kid, uh, a little kid, an amateur, somebody green, somebody scared, can simply just reach down and grab his face and move his butt. Well, the way that we're gonna be able to get that is just by repetition. For him to realize any time that he grabs a hold of he grabs a hold of our hands. There we go. Pro tip here, look whenever I'm asking him to do this, look how I really twist and turn my body. I want it to be so obvious that when I turn here, that's what I want is for his butt to move. So turn my body. You don't realize the pressure that you have with your legs on the horse's spine by looking where you want to go. You've seen a lot of that in the power of the circle work that we've been doing on this virtual, virtual clinicking. So many people, they start to ask the horse to turn. They have the idea of where they want to go. They ask the horse to turn, they pull the face, and the horse doesn't go and they look down at the horse. Well, now the horse has his head bent and now you're looking at the fence that you're going to crash into and he keeps riding towards that fence. You don't want that to happen. So you make sure when, when you want to turn, your eyes are where you're trying to go. In this scenario, we're trying to give him 180 degree turns, full circles, moving his butt around. Because again, that's a big old booty he has there. And whenever he gets scared, he just locks this up, his head and neck, and he starts driving, whether he's bucking or running away with you, and he just doesn't give, and you can do whatever you want in those, in those moments with the reins, and he just won't give. So we, we're making sure Every time that you see me just reach down and touch that rein, that's just one more rep. That's just one more, one more time to add that muscle memory to him that anytime a rein picks up, buddy. So right there, I pick up that rein. I don't want him to have to think about it. I want it to be ingrained in him that when a rein picks up off his neck, that he should be looking that way. If a horse, if a horse can hear a fly land on his butt, then he can hear you pick up a rein. So I wanna make sure, there we go. He's getting lighter, he's getting better. There we go. Great, great. My next softening exercise, 
So we've got his head and his butt. The next thing that I love to do is a spiral. It works amazing on these big, thick, dull horses that don't give and don't really care about your pressure because you can pick them apart. The way that it's done is you ask that horse to go forward just like this. Then I'm going to lock this inside hand on my knee, take my legs off, and I'm going to ask him to back up with that outside rein and release. The great thing about this is he's already locked over here to the side, so he's not centered. So he'd have a hard time rearing, he'd have a hard time bucking, he'd have a hard time running off with me. If he has an issue, I just let go of that outside rein, he turns, and I ask again. He backs up a little bit, I release, he turns, I back him up again. So I can get him as soft as I want to by simply out persisting him. Couple pro tips, don't over flex him because then when you ask him to back, he'll just flex more. You want his chin in front of the point of his shoulder where his shoulder and his chest meet is where I want to lock my hand in. Pro tip number two is keep your hands low. Our idea is to, to get him really giving and dropping his head. So if we keep our hands low, especially in a snaffle or a halter, that is direct contact. That means wherever your hands are, that's where you're asking for his head to go. That's really going to help him get soft. Good boy. Bump, 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 release. Bump, 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 release. Right there. That took a whole five seconds, but five seconds feels like a long time whenever they don't give. Most people, when it doesn't work immediately, they give up on it. They, they stop trying. You got to make sure to stick with it. Look, the next time I just picked up that rein, he started backing up. Already, this is the opposite of what he's been trained to do to be rigged up and drive into a bridle and not give. This is the opposite of that. This is getting him where he's not strong. Look how big and powerful his head and neck is, shoulders are. When we get him off center, we're taking away half of his muscle groups. So we're getting to, to work with a weakened version of him, a shadow of himself. Since he doesn't feel strong here, he doesn't feel like he should rear. He doesn't feel like he should buck because I have him off center already. If I really had an issue, I'd just pitch the outside rein, toss that, and then move his butt like we already showed him. If we do this, it's going to be a lot easier to just systematically break him apart. Now he's starting to get fingertips soft. That's what I'm looking for. I want him to be so butter soft that you could put a kid on him and you're gonna be able to catch him with no problem. Get him a little bit more bent, ask him to back up. Bump, bump, release, bump, bump, release, bump, bump, release. Good job, buddy, good job. All right, guys, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come right here and we're gonna ask for those shoulders to give. So what we wanna do is we wanna get them going forward. Now we're gonna put that inside rein and leg on him, take that outside rein and leg off of him. And that's button number three. Button number one was flex his head. Button number two was move his butt. Button number three with the reins is to move those shoulders over. When I want him to move, when I want to go straight, I have two reins and two legs on him. When I want him to change directions, I'm going to take a leg and a rein off of him. See how his shoulder pops out? His front feet cross over. There we go. Perfect. Switch sides. So right here, he's being a little sticky. So I bump, bump, bump with that inside rein. There we go until he yields. Bump, bump, bump with that inside rein. There we go. Bump, bump, bump with that inside rein. Take my outside rein and leg off of him. And release. There we go, buddy. Push him over, push him over. How 
having him where he can travel, not straight, we can call it riding the eye. We call it riding the eye. It's whenever you get their face off center and then drive them forward. This is really going to help you with these stiff, sticky horses and your bucking horses and the horses that like to run off. Because again, you're starting your motion already with the ball in your court. By asking him to ride forward, and again, we call this riding the eye, riding the eye here. That's just us asking him to go forward. Look at how my arm is extended here. The reason this is gonna work so well, when he bucks, he puts his head down between his legs and he starts giving it to you. When he runs off, he locks his nose out in a straight line and he takes off with you. So since I did a spiral and I have his shoulders moving, now I can ride the eye. Look how I extend, he still feels free to go forward, but I have my inside hand extended like this. So the only way for him to run off with me or to take his, to take his face from me to buck is he's gonna have to pull my body out of the saddle. And at this point in his training, he's too soft to do that. He's still not a soft horse, but he's too sensitive to try to pull me out of the saddle. So I can gas him up and I can look up because I know where his head's at. Anytime he gets heavy on me, I'll bump, bump, bump. When he gets soft, I'll leave him alone. Bump, bump, bump. When he gets soft, I'll leave him alone. This is really gonna allow you to ride more difficult horses than you're accustomed to, more problematic horses than you're accustomed to. Trying to ride a bucker or a runner the same way you ride your old broke horse, that's not a recipe for success. Your old broke horse has earned your trust and you allow them to be straight. You allow them to ride with two hands. If you do that with him, he's gonna take advantage of you because that's who he is. So until he earns his trust, he's not gonna earn his straightness again. And that's really how you're gonna handle a disrespectful Frisian or big horse. Get them soft left and right. If you can control left and right, you can control where they go. They have no say bucking, running, or rearing, they can't take you for a ride if you can control left and right. Then when we start controlling up and down, which we started, there we go. We start controlling up and down, we start controlling how they go. So when we want him to be in dressage mode, we'll pick our hands up, pick his head up, he'll get prancy. Our gated horse, we pick their heads up, let them gate. Um, our English horses that we want up in the bridle, we pick our hands up. But for him, we want him to be a quiet trail horse, that's what his owner wants. So left and right keeps him from running away with us or bucking us off. Now putting his head down is gonna make him relax. Anytime we put his pole below his withers, it releases an endorphin that kills adrenaline. But you can't ask them to put their head down until you have left and right. You need to pick them apart so you can control where they're going. Then, and only then, can we start controlling how they go. So now you'll start seeing me start to apply both hands and say, hey buddy, this is called putting a ceiling on. And anytime he picks his head up, I'm gonna kinda bother his face, bump him a little left, right. Look how I'm sitting back on my pockets. Bump left, right, release. So as long as he'll walk like, the fact that he's walking like this, I'm so proud of his progress and how far he's been able to come this month. Because when I tell you he was the opposite of a horse that could put his head down, even in the stall, you would pass by a stall, he was stuck like this, like, like he was made out of granite. And when you pulled on him, it was like pulling on a building. The fact that he can drop his head and find relaxation under saddle, that is a big win, a big forward. That's what we're looking for. The other thing is I'm gonna sit back on his butt. The more I sit over his butt, the more it raises his withers. He liked to carry himself very flat backed, very high headed. So if I sit over his withers and push his shoulders down with my weight, that's gonna pick his head up. But if I sit real deep on my pockets, and on top of that, add a little pressure with my hands whenever he picks his head up, this is gonna be his trail walk when his owner gets him back. He's gonna walk just like this down the trail, and he's gonna be so soft and easy on the reins that he's gonna think, you know what, even if I'm spooked, I'll wait for you to tell me what to do because I don't wanna get disengaged. Just like this, you can pick apart any horse. It doesn't matter how strong they are. If you're more persistent than they are, you don't beat a horse with power, you beat him with persistence. We're not as strong as him, we're not as fast as him, He's meaner than we are, but we're just more persistent. We're so persistent, bump, 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 disengage, disengage. 
and every time he drops, every time that he softens, we immediately release just to do it all over again. And in the course of a month, I mean, completely changing. Um, and by the end of the month, he'll be ready for, for his owner to, to go out there on the trail and walk, be easy, um, and not really have a problem. If you like what you saw in this video, hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos like it. And I'm supposed to give a, a giveaway, a free one week, I said again, a free one week vacation with me, Mr. MG, down here in Poplarville, Mississippi. But to get that, what you gotta do is be the first person watching this live to email a special code to gasconhorsemanship at gmail.com. And this special code, I haven't came up with it yet, but I'm coming up, hmm. All right, the special code is khaki kangaroos. I repeat, khaki kangaroos. That's the special code. If you send it to gasconhorsemanship at gmail.com and you're the first person to send it, you're gonna get a free one week vacation right here in South Mississippi. And we'll show you all the tricks of the trade. If you wanna see more in depth coverage of how to work your horses and all the how to's, check out the bio link. You can see our membership. It has over 700 videos of how to. I have this information and I'm trying to give it to the world. I want you guys to know how because I want you to stay safer and have more fun on your horses. So check out the link below. And again, that secret code is khaki kangaroos. All right, guys. See you in the next video.